Hey everyone, uh, thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, it is the last day of the festival. Uh, we've got Kevin Ligo, we've got Amazon India, Taylor Swift has released a new album, um, but you're here at our session, so thank you very much. Um, my name is Minori Irvindran and I'm the editor of Television Business International, uh, TBI magazine. Um, we have an amazing panel here uh, today with us, uh, spanning four countries. We've got two commissioners from Australia, Ireland, Finland, Germany, um, it is wonderful. Uh, and the, effectively the, the impetus behind uh, this session is you've spent the entire week hearing a lot from the you know, local PSBs and what they're looking for. Um, let our panel of commissioners uh, tell you a little bit about some of the international opportunities and, and some of the other avenues that you can have for your projects. Um, you know, where a no from, a, from ITV doesn't necessarily need to be the end of a project. You could, you could perhaps uh, look elsewhere, Australia or, or many other uh, avenues that we'll, that we'll discuss. Um, I'm just going to kind of run through the, the, uh, our panel very, very quickly and we'll, we'll do some clips um, and we'll hear about people's remits uh, to begin with and then we'll kind of uh, get into the wider discussion. So um, I have, uh, we have Dermot Horn, who is the Director of Acquisitions and Co-Productions at RT, Ireland's uh, public, uh, public service broadcaster. We've got Rick Kalowski, who is the Head of Comedy for ABC Australia. Uh, Dr. Simona Milius, who is the um, SVP of International um, Fiction, uh, overseeing co-productions and acquisitions for ZAF. Um, Alan Sim, who is a commissioner and executive producer with Finnish Telco, Elisa. And uh, last but not least, John Godfrey, who is the head of Unscripted for, for SBS. Um, amazing. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, Dermot, I was wondering if you could actually tell us a little bit more about your remit, and then we will, we will uh, play the clip afterwards. Yeah. I'm um, head of acquisitions, but also co-productions at RTE. Uh, so I'm responsible for a lot of our international business. That's uh, putting together international co-productions, working with my my head of drama, my head of comedy. But also, I work in co-productions uh, in the non-scripted field. Uh, I'm also responsible for RTE's um, investment in Irish feature films as well. So I would have invested in Brooklyn, which is uh, the one that keeps giving in terms of our investment. Um, uh, so yeah, kind of international, bring, bringing Ireland to the international stage. Amazing. And can we please play the clip for RT? Um, Rick, can we hear a little bit more about your remit as well? Yeah, so I'm uh, head of comedy at the ABC in Australia. So we're thinking of us as the equivalent of the BBC. We're the Australian sort of the, probably the primary, sort of one of the two public broadcasters. Um, so my remit is I look after sort of overseeing development production, financing, commissioning, uh, obviously with others, but uh, that's my day-to-day -day job of all fully scripted uh, comedy at the ABC. So not entertainment, not sort of entertainment formats, but any fully scripted comedy, whether it's half hour pilots, short digital short form, and also now podcast, um, I'm, your, I'm your guy. Um, and I should probably say the clip that, uh, but one of the big things that we do, we talk about, I do a lot of co-production now with the US, but it's starting to open up in the UK and the clip is from our first sort of big new UK co-production, which actually starts here on Sky One next month, uh, even before it starts with us. And it is Frayed. There's a show called Frayed, F-R-A-Y-E-D, from Merman Television. Amazing. Can we roll a call, please, from ABC? And Simone? Yeah, fine. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm responsible for the, for the international fiction uh, for that EF. That means uh, acquisition as well as uh, co-production. Uh, ZDF has also two departments for domestic fiction. So I have learned that it's something uh, n not normal having also a, a department for the international fiction. But maybe it's a clue that uh, uh, my the area of my responsibility is not only the main channel of ZDF, but we run also uh, ZDF Neo as a channel for targeting a younger audience. Then we are uh, key partners in Arte and Dreisat, which are cultural channels. So we oversee a wide range of uh, feature films as well as series. And, and for that reason, we co-produce especially uh, feature films from Arthouse to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> look and feel.
feel uh, as well as, as international series co-producing co with a wide range of partners um, all over the world. Uh, a lot of them with the Scandinavians. So we, we yeah, that, that was the beginning of our co-production activities, I'd like to say, uh, inventing Scandi Noir. And uh, right now we have partnerships as for instance with the European Alliance together with uh, RAI and uh, France TV uh, together with the Scandinavians who um, made a network, the Nordic 12 uh, or for instance with the Austrian and the Swiss and last but not least uh, together with BBC Studios to develop content together. And what I can show you is a, a short trailer just to give you a hint what I'm talking about. Scroll the R idea. Terrific, thank you. Uh, Alan? Yeah, hi, I'm, so I'm Alan Sim. I'm a commissioner and exec producer at Elisa. Um, Elisa is basically, for some of the Brits here, is a bit like the kind of BT of Finland. It's a large telco, which um, has, is an OTT service as well. And as part of that, we kind of commission mainly Finnish content. We have about seven or eight series a year. And we work with uh, producers in Finland, but also producers in Germany, such as Bavaria and Nadcon. And we're working right now with producers in the UK. So um, we have a pretty wide remit. Most of our content is Finnish or Finnish-led, but we are also doing um, co-production work, which has cross-language um, content. Um, and we are mainly doing all scripted, so um, mainly drama and uh, comedy drama. Um, and the clip that I'm going to show you is our new Cold War thriller. It's a very short clip and it's coming out this October. It's Shadow Lines? Shadow Lines. Amazing. And John? <coughs> yeah, so I'm John Godfrey, head of Unscripted at the second smaller public broadcaster in Australia um, at SBS. You should think of SBS as, as a sort of channel four in terms of sensibility, but we have a very particular charter uh, where everything we commission has to explore some facet of cultural diversity. That can include gender and sexual diversity as well. Um, and uh, as head of Unscripted, I look after commissioned factual documentaries, food, entertainment, and factual entertainment. The, sh the clip I'm going to show you is there's two shows. One is our biggest best known f uh, original format produced by CJZ, who I know are here in the room, um, is Go Back to Where You Came From. Now we did a live version in October last year and it was the scariest thing I've ever been involved in. Um, the second one is a promo for Slow TV, which we've sort of been doing every summer for two years and, and that summer is in January. Um, so we did the first one called The GAN, which was a three hour train journey on the main channel and a 17 hour one on the second channel and it became a big cult hit. Um, so that's just really two, two, two different sides of our factual slate, I think. So, yeah. Great. Last clip from SBS, please. Thank you so much. I mean, go back to where you came from is probably one of my favorite formats ever. It's just Absolutely incredible. Um, but John, yours is a really interesting case because obviously you're the only unscripted um, person really on this session. So thank you very much for, um, for taking part. But um, with Look Me in the Eye, I find that a really interesting <coughs> example because that is uh, that was an idea brought to you by CPL Productions. Yeah. Um, and it had been sort of rejected by UK broadcasters, right? But you, <coughs> that's but right. You... Yeah, that's CPL through Red Arrow. Um, so that, that, that was an idea that had been rejected by all the UK broadcasters. Uh, but that doesn't bother us at all. I mean, actually, sometimes uh, that can be a good thing, as far as we're concerned. Uh, but that was a six one hours uh, of a sort of reconciliation format uh, of people looking in their eyes and then deciding whether they wanted to reunite or not. But that's just an example of the way that you can work with us. Um, in fact, we have two, two formats at the moment that have been rejected by all UK broadcasters that uh, started at conversations at conferences that we're, de we're actively developing. Um, and a couple of other sort of examples are, I, I had, a, had a, a meeting with Arrow Media at Real Screen once, and they told me about, uh, they were doing this America in Colour for Smithsonian. 
now we are doing, we are doing Australian colour and we can commission the second series. Now one thing you should know is that uh, we can't commission overseas companies, we can only commission Australian companies. So, uh, so Arrow formed a relationship with an Australian company um, and that's how that was produced. Mm -hmm. Another example you know, uh, is uh, we had a conversation with Love Productions a couple of years ago at the Science Congress. They told me they were doing Muslims Like Us, perfect for us. Uh, the, the, the BBC were developing it. We started developing it at the same time. Uh, and actually, in the end, we commissioned a sequel that the BBC didn't called Christians Like Us. So. Brilliant. Yeah. And for, for the projects uh, that you say were obviously rejected by UK broadcasters, but you took them on, why, why obviously were they not the right fit for the UK and why were they the right fit for you? I, um, look, I think that we, we are, um, we have to take risks. I mean, like we are, we, you know, we, we do take risks and I think we probably take more risks now than the UK broadcasters. Um, and that's certainly a lot of the feedback I'm getting from a lot of the UK production companies. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I think that that. And the fact that our charter is, is actually quite narrow, yeah, I mean, it's actually really difficult to find re ideas in that space that really can cut through and get an audience and aren't worthy. Um, and, uh, you know, does that answer the question? <laughs> sure, okay. Um, I mean, it's interesting that you say, obviously, you can't commission directly. You need, you know, you need folks to team, team up with a, a local production uh, company, and that's the same for, uh, for you, Rick, obviously, with the ABC, and also um, Dermot as well, right? Can you guys speak a little bit about, about that process? Yeah, I mean, um, RT is the public broadcaster in Ireland. I mean, our, our remit has to be, uh, and it is enshrined in our charter, that we, we have to encourage and support the Irish independent community. And we want to do that anyway. We want more Irish writers, you know, uh, producers, etc., succeeding. So if uh, an idea comes to us, say, from a British company or a Canadian company or an Australian company, and there are significant Irish elements in it, we will put them in touch with a range of companies. We don't dictate. We will say, go and meet, here's a list, or they might know that, that, that list themselves anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and they will get together. Now, what we don't want is the Irish production company just to facilitate the tax relief, because a, a lawyer can do that, quite honestly. We want the Irish producer to be a creative producer, to have uh, an engagement in the scripting, to make sure that the scripts are authentic, because often you will get somebody who, who's written something. They might even be an Irish writer who's, who's working in London, but they haven't lived in Ireland for 20 years. There are subtle changes, so you know we'd want an Irish writer to pass on it. You'd want the Irish producers to be involved in, in every aspect of it. And what we found is by an Irish producer getting involved with an international producer, that they themselves are forging relationships that might not involve RTE in the future at all. It's all positive, but that, that's how we would work it, yeah. And that's sort of looked much the same for us with the additional element that, you know, sorry, like RTE, the same element really, that, that whatever we do, that we, would, we need to have an Australian production uh, company involved and not just to be a facilitator of production, but to really have a sort of a, a role in you know, the company we work with in scripted comedy, of which CJZ are one that's here, fantastic companies with international standard skills in this area, of course. But the second thing is, you know, again, it really has to significantly speak to an aspect of Australian life. I mean, that's a key part of our charter. Um, um, and if it's not doing that, you know, we can still be involved. We can do a pre-buy. Mm -hmm. We can just acquire the tape. But we're not going to co-commission something unless it's really speaking to an aspect of Australian life, whether it's a show that takes place in Australia or takes place overseas, but it's got to have that element. And that's as important to us as the cultural diversity element is to SBS, you know, I would say. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and we will kind of get back to that example with, with Freight as well, sure. in terms of, of tapping into Australian culture and identity. Um, but Simone and Alan, you guys can commission um, directly, right? Like it's, yes. it's a little bit different yes. for you. And, and for us, it's a, it, it's a bit different because we have those d domestic departments. So uh, coming from the international side, the, 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 the German hook might be interesting for us in a, in a story, but it's not a must. We have learned from our audience that they became more and more uh, global. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are very open-minded. They, 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 uh, uh, they have a Europe, European spirit, European feeling, and that means that they uh, understand diversity as a greater variety. And it doesn't matter whether uh, an underground has been 
hijacked in, uh, in, in, in Copenhagen or in Berlin. Uh, so uh, what, what we are interested in is in <coughs> fact to find creative partners, uh, to be very strong on the editorial side and to, to develop stories that, uh, that target a, a, a young European audience. And, and Alan, for you as well. Slightly similar. I mean, we work with a lot of, I'd say 90% of the work that we do is with Finnish producers, but we do bring in co-producers, or we don't, should I say, the producer often will bring in a co-producer, often in Germany. We've done two shows with two German co-producers. Um, and that often will help us on the scripting work, help us on, on, on finding maybe an international feel. But at the same time, we do have stuff that's completely Finnish, Finnish language, local, local producers. So we do a bit of both. And I think for us, that it's, it's treading that careful path of keeping the shows particularly Finnish, but also having some stuff that, might, that may feel more inter international. So we do a bit, a bit of both. And our new series that we're, we're doing with Warner Brothers is a good example of that. It's, it's a Warner Brothers Finland series but the co-producer is in is in the UK and we've managed to team that up and it's you know it's and that's wall to wall and that's wall to wall so we so we so we can do that um, but I would say the pr pr you know primary it's with Finnish producers can you tell us a little bit about that um, uh, that the, the wall to wall project and how that sort of came about yeah so like you're saying about projects and wall to wall had a had a had an idea a one pager and I, I know they've been to see commissioners here with this one pager it was, it was basically a couple of lines and um, and we liked it, and sort of, and I knew obviously Walter were part of the Water Brothers group, so it was one of those ones about how can we team them together to make this work or not work. And uh, the writer on it is a woman called Kate Ashfield, who's a very famous actress here, she's in Shaun of the Dead and Line of Duty, who wrote Born to Kill. So we we paired them up with the team in in uh, in Finland to try and make it work and adapt the script, and uh, which was has been challenging. One of the ladies here, Katty, was working on this very challenging thing to do because with Finland, obviously, there's, ve there's, there's very significant cultural differences. You know, in particular, lots of things that you would say in English you wouldn't say in Finnish, or you simply that scene wouldn't happen. <laughs> so, um, you know, the like the dialogue has to be stripped back. So, part of it was it, with the challenge with the writing, and part of it is a challenge with, with getting the actual the co-production working. And we're we're still shooting right now, but I think it's going to be a great. It's a six-part psychological thriller, and it's all in Finnish. It's all in so it's yeah, so it's a really interesting one. We kind of it's kind of a, sort of a bit of a test case for us to see if if it's something we could do. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Um, with some of these co-productions, it's almost like the, the 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 money can sometimes be the easy part in terms of, of financing the creative and and trying to to obviously um, navigate the interests of, of various parties, especially when you're, you know, when you're working a little f further afield too, can be, can be challenging. Um, Rick, do you have any examples of, uh, of, of such cases where, you know, uh, that's been a little bit, I suppose with, with English language, it might be, a, but still at the same time, there's cultural uh, differences, isn't it, that you have? Yeah, I mean, the big one is, you know, we, we're never, we are only ever, I've, I've never once, I've never once had any interest in, and I never will have any interest in doing a co-production. I'm, I'm only interested in doing a show. Mm. Um, and, you know, uh, but at the same time, there is no such thing anymore as sort of, in, in Australia, there is no domestic scripted market. There is only an international scripted market. Australian producers are really good at sort of getting out there at co and co-financing. Um, um, uh, so that, you know, it, it, it can't feel like, a, it can't feel something like something contrived, sort of shoehorned into a co-production. So this thing that we played the clip from, is a really good example of a sort of catnip, quintessential co-production feeling show, but it's completely organic at the same time. The Australian lead, who's the creator, the writer, the star and the co-producer is a woman called Sarah Kendall, much better known here than she is in Australia. She's lived here for 20 years, she's got family here, you know, she's married with kids and so forth here. Um, all her stand-up shows are about growing up in Newcastle in New South Wales, which um, is now becoming a very she-she coastal place, but was a very poor, one-time mining city, very disadvantaged, full of heroin, full of unemployment. And all her shows are about growing up there in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and that's what the show's about. The show's about, you know, a well-to-do Australian woman who's actually thank a sort of a toxic fraud, narcissist, speaks in a ridiculous, plummy, would-be English accent, living her beautiful life in London in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, the husband, as you saw, turns up dead. Um, 
it's incredibly embarrassing that he died with a 1980 size mobile phone stuck up his butt. <laughs> the doctor who she's dealing with is the married to a woman whose ki and their kids go to the same fancy school as her kids. Of course, it gets out at the school. She's so embarrassed, she decides she has to leave England. And in fact, there's no money. There's no money. When the husband's dead, the, their life was a fraud. And she tells the kids they're going back to their beautiful life in Australia, in Sydney. But she's not from Sydney. She's from Newcastle. And she's what we call a bogan. They call a chav. And she turns up in Newcastle, having told New all of Newcastle 20 years before, to told everyone in Newcastle to go fuck themselves. And she turns back up with children who've never seen the sun, unemployable, with no skills, in a, in a city with 50% unemployment, having told the entire city to go fuck itself. And she's on back. And everyone says, and everybody, the entire city wants to kill her, basically. And that's the show. But, you know, all her shows are about Newcastle. Mm. So it was not at all, I mean, it, it, it's, it could be contrived in the wrong hands, but it's completely authentic. And she knows that world. Her parents still live in Newcastle. And we shot the show a somewhat in the UK. That scene was shot in the UK. The, the UK scenes were all shot in the UK. And sometimes in Australia, you see these shows that are meant to be set all over the world and you can see the Harbour Bridge in the background. It's just embarrassing. You want to kill yourself. Um, <laughs> but, the, you know, that show, because we had money from Sky and from Sky Vision and from us, mm -hmm. who had real money in the show, it needed to look a certain way. The house in London really needed to look good and it looks great. And then the stuff in Newcastle, we shot in and around Newcastle um, and right across Australia. So it was sort of a quintessential co-production. But in no way was it contrived. It was completely true to the story. Right. And that story was, had been, you know, <coughs> it came to you, it's Merman, obviously, right? It's Merman. So it came to, Sarah I'd Morgan's been part. tracking Sarah Kendall for a long time, you know, the stand-up. I see a lot of stand-up shows, part of my job. She's a fantastic, she's been nominated for the big prize here a couple of times at Edinburgh. Her show's on now, her current show is called Paper Planes. It's fantastic. If you haven't seen it, it's still on. Um, so I've been talking to her for a while. Then this idea uh, came to me from Merman. ABC, actually, we came on first to develop the first couple of scripts. Mm -hmm. Then, um, I think that was the case, then Sky Vision was involved. At that time, Merman had a deal with Sky Vision. Sky Vision came in as distributors. That's, I think, the point at which Sky One came on. Mm -hmm. But from that point on, they were absolutely co-equal partners. And in fact, it's going out here first on Sky One a few weeks before it goes out in Australia. So from that point on, um, you know, it was really an equal partnership. But the ABC, we will absolutely, you know, if it's a great thing that really speaks to our remit, a great show, we'll happily put our money in first. Mm. You know, we're not going to wait and say, we're, we're, we're not one of those broadcasters where, well, if he'll do it, we'll do it, or if she'll do it, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll put our money where our mouth is. Yeah, but I think you're, you're absolutely right. The content is the key. And if, if everybody is convinced it's going to be a great show and, and, and the will is to do a great show, then you should do it together. But it's not uh, the will to do a co-production. So, for instance, in the European line, we, we, we decided that if we do uh, co-pros together, it's, it's a great help because you get a big financial basis to make a show happen. But we can only make make shows happen, everybody is convinced that that's going to be a great show for us, for our broadcaster. And uh, when we do so, uh, as for instance uh, with Around the World in 80 Days or Su Survivors, which are two very different <coughs> projects I'm going to explain later on, then there's one leading elephant and that's the one who brought the project into the European Alliance and ev the, the other partners, they are, they are dealing together to make that show grow. Uh, uh, great, but uh, on the on the on the background of a financial uh, tremendous uh, financial basis that makes the sh uh, that guarantees that the show may happen. And uh, to to give you examples, for instance, around the world in eighty days, it's a uh, it's a remake of the famous novel of uh, Jules Verne, and it's produced by a UK company by Slim Production. Mm -hmm. And we, all of us, have been convinced that might be a, a great, great show, especially for the Christmas time. And dealing with that topic, we found out that it would be great to have a UK actor, and meanwhile it's David Tennant. And then we were looking for a French uh, actor as well as, an, a, and for a German actress. And, and it's Leonie Benish, the French actor is still open, but it's Leonie Benish who is an upcoming star in, in, in Germany. Some may know her from uh, Bab Babylon Berlin. So in Germany, she's a great name uh, as a young actress. And it's shot in English. Um, and uh, we, we dub it for all our countries. 
country, so it's dubbed in Italian, it's dubbed in German, mm -hmm. and for our uh, Mediathek, that's the uh, ZDF iPlayer, let's say, we offer the international version as well as the, uh, the dubbed version. And Survivors is another example how we work together. It's a, it's a, a story that came out of a, a young author's training writing room uh, of the Italian Rai, and we thought the story could be interesting for all of us. And then we talked about how we could uh, put ingredients in that show that make it interesting for all our audience targeting the younger. And now we are on our way. It's a story about people uh, going to a sailing trip uh, for holidays uh, from the age of, let's say, 18, 20 up to 50. And they, they say goodbye to their partners, their family, and then they disappear. And everybody, they, they, they are searching the boat and they do not find them. And so everybody is convinced, okay, they, they, are, they have died. And after a year, the boat comes back yeah. with some of them on the boat, but not all, not all of them. And then the story goes on what happened. And I mean, that's a perfect uh, uh, basis to bring in also different nations, mm -hmm. because that's normal that if you go for holidays, you have different partners uh, on a boat. It's a perfect project for, yeah. for something like yeah. the Alliance. I mean, that project is interesting because I remember um, seeing Michele um, Zata from, yeah. from Rai talking yeah. about a connective fiction. Yeah. And he was discussing how, you know, um, it was difficult to sort of navigate kind of the episode length because obviously people have, you know, you've got three partners and everybody yeah. has slightly different um, expectations and requirements. And, and, you know, he was actually very frank about the fact that it's, uh, it's very much a, it is a compromise and, you know, it, it can be difficult, which is sort of the, the first time that I'd heard somebody actually say, okay, you know, it's not, it's not easy, you know, it takes some time. Um, yes. Can you speak yes. a little bit about like kind of the, the, the challenges of, of this kind of alliance? Because obviously that story lends yeah. itself so organically, but, but what are some of the other, the more practical realities of... of yeah, I mean, it's a lot of talking and I, I think it's not a compromise. But it's the question whether you can uh, can convince uh, the other partners that your idea might fit, fit better to the story than another idea. Uh, so doing compromises is is the dead of all good stories. Um, but uh, the basis uh, for for doing so in my opinion, is, uh, is a great reliability and is also uh, an experience of working together and to, to understand the issues and the needs of the other partners. For instance, um, uh, uh, the Italians or the French, speaking about the European alliance, they, they need a strong French or Italian hook. To, uh, because they have uh, regl uh, reglementations by their um, uh, their governments concerning those issues, so we have to deal with it. But it has to be organically in the story. It doesn't work if you just put it somewhere and it it, it doesn't fit. So, in my opinion, and and that's my experience, the best way to deal with it is to be open and frankly. And then you find solutions. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say that there are times when it's more honest to say this shouldn't be a co-production. This mm. should be a pre-buy. Mm. And actually, there's nothing wrong with that. And a lot of us, I mean, you know, Simone and myself are, are involved in both kind of pre-buys as well as co-productions. Uh, a pre-buy, you're still building that relationship with another broadcaster. And it might be the next project right. might be yeah. co-production. But you're better off pre-buying. And, and the other reason we need to pre-buy is because of rights. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see Marcus Sturkey is here in the audience. And Marcus uh, is president of the EBU TV committee. And I'm, I'm a vice president of the TV committee. And one of the things we've been doing is, is hosting for a lot of public broadcasters workshops on rights. Uh, because there was a time in, when, in the co-production world up to a couple of years ago where you might be short 20% of your budget as a producer. And you would give away the rights to maybe one SWOD 
and this, that still applies, and you absolutely are entitled to do that. But for, for us as broadcasters to cede sometimes all of those rights, when we know that our audiences are not just watching live anymore, they're watching non-linear, they're watching on the long, um, you know, over 12 months or 24 months. So, so we want to work with producers so we can secure those rights. And that's much easier to do when you get in early and when you maybe you pre-buy. And we've seen that with the Nordic 12, which is, as, as people may be aware, is, is 12 dramas are produced by the Nordic countries every year. Um, and they all chip in, but there is again a leading broadcaster there again. Uh, they, but they have great access on their players to those dramas for 12 months minimum before they go anywhere else. Uh, and so as part of the EBU TV committee, we're looking at how we as public broadcasters can actually work together. Uh, and that'll be more on the pre-buying end. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a co-production. It can just be, it's a really good story coming out of Germany, coming out of mm. Belgium. And, and, and we, would like to, we would like to be able to show that, but we know that we need to be able to show it where the audience is going. And that's not just to live television as well. So that's another reason to, to, to get involved early. Sure. Rick, could you could you speak to that as well in terms of the? I, I wouldn't. There's not not much more that I'd add to that. I agree with all of that. Mm. You know, and in fact, there's a thing we're doing with the BBC, which is actually us, the AB, us at the ABC, <coughs> BBC New Zealand, and an American streaming service. We love the show. The star is a Kiwi, not an Australian. Uh, and with the best will in the world, in fact, I even gave it a run at the ABC and saying, can't we co-commission this? It just wasn't Australian enough. It's set in London. She's a Kiwi, but we love the show. She's a well-known, pretty well-known star in Australia. She's been done really well for us. We are, um, albeit with a light touch, we're, we have creative involvement, but we've constructed it as a pre-buy, mm -hmm. but, but with our domestic rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and with, um, and with, but with due deference, with some creative input, but we couldn't co-commission it. But so what? I mean, it will still feel to our audience. I think it will still feel to our audience at a really good price for us too, yeah. like a really good mainstream. It's a brilliant, brilliant show. It's a rom-com set in London. What's the show? Could you? It's a show uh... called Starstruck uh -huh. from Rose Matafeo, who won Edinburgh here last year. She's a Maori Kiwi woman. She's fantastic. Very, she's a superstar in New Zealand. She's becoming a big star in Australia. We've had her on a couple of series of a show of mine called Squinters. Um, she's been on a bunch of panel shows in Australia. It's like a reverse Notting Hill set in, um, set in London. We couldn't co-commission it, even though I would have loved to, because we just can't close one eye and pretend that a New Zealander is the same as an Australian. Right. Um, but we are involved. <laughs> and, um, but you know, we're taking a light touch. We're involved yeah. creatively. We've yeah, worked with her a lot. And the producers at Avalon, they're really happy for us to have an involvement. But, you know, we are showing due deference to the fact that the vast majority of the money is from the BBC. They originated the show. Um, I actually came in second on that show. Mm -hmm. But we're showing due deference to them. We're sort of taking a light touch and we'll sort of sit behind them. Also, the team is excellent and she's a world-class writer and talent. But, you know, but who knows? I mean, the next one, to your point, we might co-commission. Exactly. Got it. Okay. And who's your, who's your US streaming partner on that? That's us. Oh, the streaming partner? Yeah. It's been announced, HBO Max. It's HBO Max, okay. Yeah. Brilliant, cool. And just to go back to the um, Alliance very quickly yeah. as well, um, you know, you mentioned Around the World in 80 Days, which is yeah. a really interesting project. Yeah. Um, how... Um, uh, What's going to be broadcast by, by the BBC as well, by the way. Right, okay, brilliant. Um, uh, how much are you, are, are you guys looking to the, to the UK as well, the creative community, uh, UK writers? Um, Oh, very much. I mean, we have good experiences <laughs> doing projects together with uh, with the UK market. Uh, for instance, uh, we uh, we have done Vienna Blood together with uh, Endor Films. That's uh, Hilary Bevan Jones. You may know. Um, uh, uh, that's that's a very interesting uh, co-production uh, ZDF has done together with the Austrian uh, television BBC already. <laughs> bought it so you are gonna see it in in uk as well or um yeah uh, uh, as mentioned uh, the um, slim production with 80 days around the world um then there there are other productions for instance as a part of the bbc content development uh, the mallorca mallorca files uh, that's a project we are going to uh, to do, to do together and we already signed the second season even though we didn't did bro broadcast it yet and i think that's a good example same uh, similar to uh, uh, the children of windermere also doing together with bbc mm. 
mm. um, because there you have you have links between UK and, and Germany. So the Mallorca files, it's an inspector team working on, on the island and uh, the guy is, uh, is German and the, the female inspector is, is English. And they, they are doing their investigation job together. So it fits perfectly well to, to a German audience as well as to, a, to an English. And the fact that it's shot uh, in English is also uh, it's 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 all right because uh, uh, English became more and more the, the European lingua franca, and and for that reason um, the audience is familiar with it. And as far as we dub it for the for the linear channel, it's it's perfect. And Windermere Children is also a, a very a very interesting project. It's it's a project we are doing for the seventy uh, fifth. What, you do not say anniversary, uh, anniversary but uh, the, the, the 75th time coming back the, um, the day of the freeing of Auschwitz next year in January, liberation. next the liberation. year. Pardon me? The liberation. Yes, yeah. thank you. That was the word I was looking for, and um, and 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 Windermere was a camp in uh, in UK where psychologists uh, with German roots brought together children who had been grown up in the concentration camps by the Nazis, and uh, and they lived there for for three or four months and were trained. To, to live in an open and free world. And they, they really became uh, friends for their entire life. And it's a, it's a, it's a really very heartwarming uh, story. Um, and, 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 and really, it's, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a great story and, and something we are very proud of to, uh, to do it together with the BBC because it's, it's a necessary film. Brilliant. No, it sounds, it sounds uh, amazing. Um, I wanted to, I'm just cognizant of the, of the time a little bit as well. Um, I wanted to move on to um, SVODs, obviously, which is, um, I know, Alan, obviously you have Elisa Vied, which is, uh, which is your own OTT service. Mm. Um, but, you know, I'm curious um, for you guys with, in terms of uh, these guys now localizing aggressively um, with Paris uh, and Berlin offices now about to, about to um, basically launch uh, just a month away. Um, I'm curious, you know, when you're doing these international co-productions, you know, are you thinking about, uh, ooh, you know, should these stories perhaps be a bit more local? Do you, are, you, are you kind of effectively doing a whole range of projects? Um, what do you, I mean, because I suppose with the, the streamers before, you could say, oh, well, we know our market best, mm. but ultimately these guys are hiring, um, some of your own your own yeah. colleagues, right? So how do you how do you respond think, to that? What's I think for us it's still a bit of a bit of a mixed bag. It's kind of like like I say, we still are we are a Finnish channel for Finns making Finnish content. Um, I guess the concern for us is when a bigger player comes in and maybe disrupts the market. Uh, and in Finland in particular, we've seen budgets rise significantly. I started there th three years ago, and I think most of the productions have pretty much doubled in in cost. Um, and if you look at Sweden, for example, and the costs there, the costs are much, much higher than in Finland. And I think for us, the, the difficulty will be possibly a big player coming in and paying bigger wages to, for directors and producers and, and key acting um, staff. And that is a concern because there is a tipping point. Finnish in particular is only a land we've spoken by five million people and it doesn't have a huge remit outside of that. So there is a, there is a, a point there where you can go to where it becomes untenable. Um, and that does make things difficult. So we do a lot of pr pr productions, obviously, that are all in Finnish language, but we do, I think, still feel we have to do some stuff which is, which is with co-producers, like we're doing a series that's going to ZDF right now. We've got a series that's going to SBS. Um, and so it, it's a difficult line and it, and it may change things, but I think the, the core for us is, is um, um, doing, uh, still doing very core shows in Finland for Finnish audiences. We do one, we're doing one right now, a second series of our series called All the Sins, which won the um, <clears throat> Nordic Film Prize or Nordic Film Prize in, in Gothenburg this year and the producers here. And um, again, it's a very Finnish story set in, in, in a, a town in the north of Finland, Aulu, and um, the characterization there is very particular to that area. And that's why it's been a, a huge success for us. 
But likewise, the series that we're doing that's going to ZDF, um, Ivalo, or Arctic Circle, has also been a huge success for us. And it's mixed language mm. and there's a big German star. So the difficulty is actually we're finding success with both the local stuff and the international mm. stuff. So we're trying to play, play, play both cards. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, if they come on board and local players come on board, then, you know, all competition is healthy competition. I think right now, Finland in particular, there's a lot of drama productions going on. There's a lot. May I just mm -hmm. interrupt because the, the example uh, he's talking about, Arctic Circle, is a very good example for how it works, in my opinion. The look and feel of that show is, in a way, typical Finland because it's Finnish landscape and that's something interesting for an European audience in my opinion because it's uh, it's it's Finnish it's different from home but on the other hand the look and feel is international so it's not that basic local uh, look and feel you normally have with your domestic content and it's also not that american look and feel but it's 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 different and i think that's a it's, that's a great opportunity for for joining european forces and our competition in doing uh, 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 productions together and if you then have the opportunity as it was in in arctic circle to have a total finnish Stuff, but one German actor who might have been a Finnish actor as well and it the story would have been the same it, it would have worked same way in Germany but the German actor in that film helped us just for marketing and because he is really a great actor so he was good mm. for the story but these are little things you can do to make a story even more successful but First of all, it has to be a great story. Mm. Okay. Um, John and, and Rick as well, could you speak to the sort of the SVOD thread in, the, in Australia as well? And, well, uh, well we, yeah, well, I mean, we're working with Netflix, but mm. I'm just going to ignore that question, go back to the previous one, uh, because I think I'm going to contradict slightly, because I am actively looking for co production. Mm. Yeah, a co production between a UK company and an Australian company. Uh, in particular, because uh, and the theme would be some global issue of cultural diversity. So, the, you know, uh, the sort of fault lines of global cultural diversity, race, Islamophobia, you know, uh, it's, it's, I'm actively looking for uh, a co international co-production, which sounds easier than it really is. It's actually a really difficult thing to do. Uh, we've never managed to crack it in terms of a contemporary international co-production. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Good. But in terms of the streaming thing, I mean, actually, again, I mean, you're, you're much more experienced at this and you've seen, seen a lot more of it than I have. I mean, what's your take? What's your, what's your threat level in terms of, you know, streaming services you know, coming into Australia? Well, um, we've, we've actually bucked the trend in terms of uh, network growth over the last couple of years. Um, uh, I mean, obviously, obviously, streamers are, uh, are going to ha have an impact on all of us. But actually, um, I'd say, uh, I think that, that Dorothy Burns sort of comment in the McTaggart lecture about sort of what streamers will provide and what public bro broadcasters provide. I think those, that clip of Go Back to Where You Came From and the 17 hour train journey, that the, the streamers are never going to be commissioning anything in that sort of mm. scripted, unscripted space. Uh, and we actually have one of the most successful streaming services in Australia, yeah. SBS On Demand. It's certainly the best curated one. It's yeah. exceptionally well curated. We kick ourselves at the ABC. We have this very popular streaming service, iView. It's massive. It's number two in Australia behind Netflix. And, you know, our scripted shows do absolutely incredible business on iView, mm. but it's not nearly as well curated as SBS On Demand, which is absolutely fantastic, I've got yeah. to say. Mm. Really good. Unfortunately, I can't claim any... John is, you know, unscripted, but I should also say SBS does a certain number of exceptional scripted shows. The single best drama at the moment, maybe the best show on TV right now in Australia, it just wrapped up this week, is a drama that SBS has done. The Hunting. Called, the Hunting, which mm. is un sold, sold to BBC here, I think. Sold yeah. by yeah. me. It's absolutely it's very good. Yeah. amazing <laughs> production company from Adelaide called Closer Productions, who I'm working with on... I have worked with them once. I'm working with them on something else that will be a co-production. Um, but it's just the best thing on television. It's totally exceptional. Fantastic. Right? 
It's exceptional. Yeah, yeah, I wish I could say I commissioned it, but I didn't. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say one other thing is about co-production from Australia, which applies to both our places, which is, you know, keep in mind, we are... We have a lot of issues with race and sort of ethnic identity and tolerance in Australia at the moment, but we are one of the most multicultural countries on earth. So, you know, nobody in Australia blinks when their executive is John and he speaks with an English accent. So for UK producers, you know, keep in mind, never mind the number of Australians who claim UK heritage or Irish heritage, you know, or Scottish heritage or English heritage, never mind that. More than a million Australians alive now, more than a million, 1.2 or something, of the 25 million Australians were born somewhere in the UK, uh, uh, were born in the UK, were born in England or Ireland or Scotland or Wales. Um, so it's just not an issue for us. I and mean, that, 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 that really smooths the path in terms of shows that otherwise have a really good cross-cultural fit. Mm. The fact that you have you know, UK characters in Australia or vice versa, we just yeah. don't blink. Just, just, just in terms of the SVODs, I, mm. I would have thought, you know, if, if an SVOD came in to Ireland and did a big production, they probably won't do a huge volume because the, the UK is right beside. But they will tend to take the kind of same model that the likes of Sky or HBO have done in Ireland. And you know, the Penny Dreadfuls, the Vikings, these are budgets five, six, seven million dollars. Um, we're not going to be co-producing those kinds of dramas, let, let's be frank. So we're going to be producing, you know, Irish stories that are authentically Irish and authentically European. The other thing is that, you know, if, if you work with an Irish producer and an Irish broadcaster, you will have access to not only the tax release, which the international productions can get access to the tax release, but the film board has now been renamed as Screen Ireland, and they have a fund for both development and also for um, production. Uh, and you need to have an Irish creative producer involved. Mm. There is also various funds if you're filming in the west of Ireland, etc., etc. So there's, there's a whole series, and there's, there's part of the licence fee in Ireland, 7% of the licence fee goes to the regulator, and there's a number of commissioning rounds per year. And again, you need to have an Irish broadcaster on board for that, and you need to have an Irish creative producer. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is that, you know, those authentically Irish stories that, you know, working with European partners or international partners, you know, will probably not be the same kinds of dramas that a big SVOD player will do in Ireland. Sure. And speaking of Ireland as well, I know uh, we're running out of time and I want to make sure that we've got a few questions on the app and to the floor too. But um, with Brexit, after, you know, if, if it happens, it probably will, God help us. But um, effectively, Ireland and Malta will be the only English speaking territories uh, in the European Union. So yeah. that obviously, I mean, we're but, seeing... But that's the... an advantage. I mean, obviously, you know, as Mona said, you know, we've got lots of, you know, Germans are producing in English, French are mm. producing in English. But actually, yes, you know, if you come to Ireland, you will produce and shoot and everything will be done in English. Mm -hmm. And there is an advantage to that. A lot of, you know, a lot of Americans like that, Canadians like that, you know, that's why our IT business in Ireland is is, is so powerful. Um, we've seen it with the animation industry already. Yeah, that's the Irish animation right, yeah. industry, which is already doing really well, we've seen more and more companies coming into Ireland post-Brexit. Um, and also, if you want to gain access to European media funding, for example, for script development, you will need an Irish producer on board as well. So we, we realize there's an advantage. There's plenty of disadvantages for our farmers and our exporters, et cetera. But, but there are some advantages in terms of media. Okay. Amazing. I'm going to go to some questions here. Uh, right. Rick, have you managed to get to any of the comedy, show, <laughs> comedy shows on the fringe? Anyone you want to poach, UK shows that you enjoy? Uh, yeah, I've seen lots of things every night. I'm sort of out there. I bought far more, I'm such an eternal optimist. I bought far more tickets than I was able to get to. But I'm only seeing UK. I mean, I do have to do it because I see so many shows. I have to do it like a military operation. So I only see Australian and some Kiwi shows in Australia. And then when I'm here, I only see um, non-Australian, non-Kiwi shows. Yeah, so I saw London Hughes last night, which I loved. I saw, yeah, you know, I could give you a list, a long list. But yes, I'm seeing a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Jenna Friedman, who's an American, I thought was incredible. Um, uh, Fern Brady I saw last night, who I love, just I'm a massive fan of Fern Brady. I can, whoever asked that question, I can talk to you afterwards and give you my long list of things that I Mm -hmm. Are these folks that you would kind of that you move, would uh, kind of go back and move uh, forward on on something with? Have you have oh, yeah, you done that in sure. the past? For sure, yeah, absolutely. That's how that's how Fraid came about. Oh, I, was, really? I had a meeting on a park bench with Sarah Kendall. I was either here or I was in Australia. And I said, whatever you want to do, I want to do it. Yeah, you know? amazing. Okay, um, would a creative be better off pitching directly to TV companies, or is, or is it smarter to go to a local production company first? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tough one. Uh, no, people can pitch directly to me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I would say either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Either. either. Same, same. Yeah. 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 Okay, brilliant. I'd frankly prefer it if they came to us because sometimes they sort of meet Australian producers overseas and in fact, they're kind of sometimes they're fly by nighters or they just talk a really big game but they can't really deliver. Mm -hmm. We might have had a bad experience with them and they've gone and signed their lives away with an Australian producer. Mm. And we go, look, we're just not going to do it. They're not going to work with them, you know. Mm. Uh, or that producer may be too busy. We found this with entertainment formats. Uh, you know, producers say, oh, I want to get the right Irish rights, but actually I'm busy for the next two years so you can have it in two years' time. Mm. So we'd prefer then to be pitched ourselves and have the choice. Right, yeah. of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, you know, can I... Let's open it all up to the uh, audience out there. There are some roving mics here. Would anybody like to ask a question in the room? Oh, we've got a hand. Hi there. Um, yeah, I just want to ask what the opportunities are for emerging producer directors who maybe want to make shorts for SBS and ABC. Um, in particular, for me in particular, SBS and ABC. So do you commission shorts that are 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes rather than... We um, look, we've we've just we've got a, we've got a sort of sh a, a season of on-demand shorts launching next week, but uh, as I, as I said previously, we can only commission uh, Australian filmmakers and production companies. We can't commission uh, overseas direct, you know, filmmakers or producers directly. So that's that's the problem with that. So as well. Ah, right. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but and, and then the, the second the second answer to that is <laughs> we um, we we don't we we um, we don't have a plan to commission any 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 more shorts this year. It's a sort of an annual thing, that, annual initiative that we do with funding agencies. So uh, I would uh, keep an eye on um, when that application process opens, and if you're an, a, an Australian citizen with an Australian business. Uh, then you're welcome to apply. Um, in the case of the ABC, we do do at various points. Obviously, our money, our focus of our money has to be on sort of filling our prime time slots, our half hour series, our main channel stuff. But we do do a lot of and we develop a lot of short form comedy. Um, you know, if it's got that Australian relevance, um, we're open for and it's really good. You know, we're open for business. It's got a, there has to be an Australian production company involved. Um, uh, uh, but we, you know, that, that's a, that's possible. Yeah, it's possible. And the answer with this sort of format is for us, short for me means anything from five to really sort of fifteen minutes. But typically, shorter is uh, better. Okay, brilliant. We are just about out of time. Very, very quickly, I want to go through a um, very quick wish list. Um, I know people have prepared things. Uh, what types of projects are you looking for right now, uh, and what slots? Just those, those two two things, very, very quickly, Dermot. Um, I suppose our main drama slots are 9.30 after the 9 o'clock news. We've got three slots a week. We don't fill enough of them. So we, we're, we're looking for high quality, relevant uh, Irish I, Irish content that, that will re relate to that audience. And, and also on a pre-sale basis, you know, international content that can go in those slots. Some, some of it could be, as, uh, you know, as Rick says, with a light Irish touch as well. Okay. Um. So our big slots for our mainstream sort of big broad stuff is Wednesday night. It's our big comedy night on the ABC, 8.30, 9 o'clock. Um, what are we looking for? You look, the answer is I'm looking for everything and nothing because I develop a lot, develop about 50 things at once. But, um, you know, if it's going to be a co-production thing, it's really got to feel authentic, as I said before, not contrived. Um, uh, if it's something that we haven't done recently, we're not developing it at the moment, but we love it, we'll develop it. Um, but it, the answer is everything and nothing. If it's good, we'll do it. If it's not, we won't. Well, I mentioned the wide range for, for, for me as well, from, from art house to the big shots. Um, what uh, relevance is, is one of the major topics that d doesn't mean it has to be a, a German uh, impact, uh, but it has to be relevant for the, for, for, for the, for the Germans. Um, uh, outstanding, yes, for, especially for the slots on Monday and uh, Sunday night. Uh, but we are also looking for procedural, specifically for our Sunday series slot, uh, crime driven with uh, implications on drama, maybe also near future. That's things we are we are looking for targeting the younger audience and our A player as well. That's really helpful. Thank you. 
Alan? Six to eight part drama. I'm with you. If it's good, it's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, and uh, right now, it's something, anything that's kind of topical and that really speaks to the viewer that's, that's topical that we think is going to work. Nothing that's crazy sci-fi, thank you. No sci-fi. Okay. There's a lot of crazy sci-fi stuff coming in. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and after Stranger Things, <laughs> everything's kind of, oh, we've got the sci-fi idea, the aliens landing on, no. Yeah. No sci-fi, understood, John. <laughs> Uh, as I said, an international co-production about a global issue of cultural diversity, uh, but also formats, paper formats, formats on the back of an envelope, are absolutely welcome, uh, but a format which is uh, about cultural diversity, which excites me, but also scares me. Right. That's it. Exciting, but this scares John Godfrey. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Thank you very much to our uh, amazing panel here for being with us, and, and also you guys. Thank you so much, and thank you. And thank you to Jane Marlowe as well, our amazing producer. So thank you, Jane. Uh, thanks.